Okay guys, so you've probably already watched the first video and this is the second video. This is gonna be the top five targets, broadband for the month of October. Now, you will wanna wait as the moon is starting to get brighter in the night sky. It's offering less flexibility to use broadband imaging. Now, that doesn't stop a lot of people. It does offer the ability to have terrible gradients in your images. But if you are in really dark skies and you have the ability to try to image even though it is going to be a brighter moon, by all means, give it a shot. So let's kick it off here. Number one is going to be, of course, I mean, how can you not do this? The Andromeda Galaxy, cataloged as M31 at two and a half million light years away, is an excellent choice for anything at 135 millimeters all the way up to 2000 millimeters. This particular galaxy offers the availability to do narrowband integration, particularly with hydrogen alpha. Now, you know you've seen it. I'm gonna to try to get it on the screen here. When you have an image that has a hydrogen alpha, the nebulosity just, it stands out so much more. Now you can take enough exposures that your red filter alone can actually capture the nebulosity without needing the help of a narrowband filter. Now where the narrowband filter comes in to help is just the fact that we can take really long exposures to get the nebulosity only and then build that into our final image. So Andromeda offers a wide array of options, especially with focal length, um, uh, coloring as well. You could do a full SHO image on Andromeda because it's that close. You could do an HOO image, which I've tried to do. I haven't finished it, but uh, I did start it. So I might pick it up next year because I don't think I'm gonna have time to finish it this year. Number two, moving along here is the Triangulum Galaxy. Of course, everybody's shot the Triangulum Galaxy unless you're just now getting into the hobby. And if you are, welcome. It's such a wonderful target to shoot. It's gorgeous. I like shooting the Triangulum Galaxy more than the Andromeda Galaxy, but the Andromeda Galaxy is just a much larger defined galaxy, whereas the Triangulum has way more nebulosity. Studies have shown that Triangulum may have more nebulas than Andromeda, and Andromeda is substantially larger. So I like shooting it because I love the integrated HA data into my broadband data. And I'll try to get that on the screen as well here. Now you can image the Triangulum Galaxy. I do recommend just a little bit more focal length, maybe starting around 300 all the way up to 2000. And it just depends on what you want to image. If you have 2000 millimeters, there's some wonderful nebulas within this particular complex that allows you to get great narrowband data as well as broadband data, or if you just wanna to stick to narrowband data. I've been seeing way more images of just narrowband, which I'll put mine up here as well, and it gives wonderful details. And I did mine at 666 millimeters of focal length with my Explore Scientific 127 millimeter triplet, um, but you could get wonderful, wonderful details at 300 millimeters and again all the way up to probably 1200 you could use an rc8 by all means if that's what you're utilizing you'll also get wonderful details even at that 1600 to 1700 millimeters of focal length but you're likely going to be cropped in really far so don't expect to get the entire galaxy my recommendations are only an ideal if you want to capture the whole thing um, again if you're using something like the 533 mc or mm pro you're already kind of at a disadvantage because it's such a small chip size. It is a wonderful camera though, but it, it does have a smaller chip. So you don't get as much once you start talking about 1600 millimeters of focal length. It is a much smaller field of view by all means. So with that, let's get to number three. Number three is gonna be a harder target to image. Unlike Andromeda and Triangulum, which are still faint targets, but they're relatively bright. This next one is going to rely on dark skies and no moon. It is cataloged as LDN 1235. It's called the Shark Nebula or the Dark Shark Nebula. People have called it either way. Um, I don't know if one's more correct than the other, but we'll call it the Dark Shark Nebula for this particular case. So it is a dark nebula, which means light doesn't really pass through it very easily. And it's primarily gonna be dust just floating out in interstellar space. And I recommend a telescope that has 300 to 700 millimeters of focal length for this particular one. I myself have shot it. And now where I struggle here at a Bortle 5 is there's still a lot of integrated noise in this image, even though it has hours of data 
I do highly recommend something even better than a Bordeaux 5 if you want a really good image of this. Um, mine turned out okay. It's not a work that I would submit to any contest by any means, but it's still a wow factor. It does look like a shark. It is a lot of fun to shoot. Um, but again, I would recommend probably a Bordel 2 or Bordel 3. Bordel 4 is probably going to be on the edge of too bright with light pollution. Um, but you can still do it by all means. It's just make sure your expectations aren't super high and expecting a possible A pod if you've only got five hours in a Bordel 7 zone on this particular nebula. The fourth one that we're going to talk about today is going to be the Iris Nebula. Well, this one's a no-brainer. It's such a gorgeous nebula. It's cataloged as NGC 7020. It is a reflection nebula. Now, I have seen star clusters um, inside of nebulosity as some of the classifications, but ultimately it's gonna be a reflection nebula. It's gonna rely on the really bright stars in the background, illuminating the actual clouds of dust in the foreground. So with this particular target, you can definitely image this one as low as 135 millimeters. Uh, anything wider than 135, unfortunately, is probably not gonna give you a great amount of detail. I do recommend for this particular target, though, that you are closer to probably 700 to 1,000 millimeters. And the reason being is different mentalities. Some people like to image the entire complex, whereas some people like to really focus in. Now, the core of this nebula is gorgeous, right? It's an ultra bright star that has got all of that dust illuminated in a blue hue or color, and it's gorgeous. Now, you can image the entire complex, which has got dust everywhere, all over the place. The entire area of sky there is dusty, and you can build a wonderful image. Of course, if you're in dark skies, longer exposures are more likely to happen, and therefore you can get more of that dust per image and less light pollution. Now, with that, again, short focal lengths do a fine job but this one does offer the availability to go up to even 1600 millimeters zoomed in on this particular area. It's a beautiful image. You won't regret doing it, but again, clear skies and the dark skies are gonna be what you're gonna need for a great image here. The last broadband target we're gonna talk about is one that we've already talked about in the narrow band section here of the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. Now with this, in my opinion, this broadband target is best shot with a reflection telescope, whether it be an RC8, an RC10, or a Newtonian. Some reflector telescope is going to offer some great details, and here's why. One, you're going to get the star diffraction spikes, which really help, in my opinion, make these images look even more beautiful. They relate a whole lot easier to even NASA's Hubble or James Webb Space Telescopes that are both RC style telescopes. You get the diffraction spikes which really make these stars pop and stand out and it adds an element that I think just cannot be replaced with something like a refractor telescope unless you of course put the the spider veins uh, via string or whatever it may be in front of your refractor to give you that same artificial diffraction spike. Of course the Elephant's Trunk Nebula is wonderful to shoot at 300 to about a thousand millimeters of focal length that offers an array of different areas to image and if you can get enough integrated time with your red blue and green color channels or just an mc style camera such as the 294 mc or the 2600 mc um, it offers an array of options it's gorgeous to shoot it is bright enough that you're going to get a lot of the nebulosity but the stars are going to look so much more natural now, the last item here is going to be what I'm going to call the complex target, right? I said this video is only going to be five, but I am going to throw in a sixth one because this one I think is worth your time. If you can get to dark skies in particular, you could definitely try shooting this in a Bordel 5 or a Bordel 6. I, I don't know if I'd recommend a Bordel 7 or up. Um, obviously, Bordel 1, Bordel 2, Bordel 3 are going to be where you want to be for this particular target. Now it doesn't, I don't know if this one has an actual name. It didn't come up when I searched, but the catalog code is gonna be SH2136. So this is gonna be a broadband target and it, it's an incredible target, but it really is gonna rely on longer exposures and a lot of them because you need a lot of signal for this one. In my experience in a Bordel 5 zone, 
with even a handful of hours, I found that this one was still really incredibly noisy, which is an inherent problem in broadband in general if you're not in an ultra dark sky. It takes a lot more photos and a lot more integrated time to really get these images to be even relatively close to what you would expect if you went to a Bortal 2 with only maybe two or three hours. So this target is very difficult in my opinion because it really relies on a strong SNR or signal to noise ratio. And if you don't have a strong signal to noise ratio, noise can actually plague your images and it won't really turn out. So this one's going to be a bonus. If you're looking for something that's hard to do, this target is probably up your alley. So with that, guys, thank you so much for joining. Be sure to let me know down below what your favorite October broadband target is going to be. We'll be sure to do this as for November as well. Let me know what you guys think with that clear skies and we'll see you next time.